Good evening, everyone. My name is Tracy Sims. Uh, this is Forum 3 uh, of HIUS 530, and it's the topic of fundamentalism and modernism. Uh, for this topic, I chose to talk about the Scopes trial and the impact that it had on the teaching of evolution versus teaching of creationism in our school system. Um, uh, this controversy started in 1925 uh, when a gentleman who was trying to revive his failing mining company in Dayton, Tennessee by the name of George Rapelia, I'm assuming I say that right, took up the American Civil Liberties Unions or ACLU's challenge to find a teacher to test a new Butler law, which had banned the teaching of evolution in the Tennessee public school system. Uh, of course, they found their perfect candidate in uh, a, a young teacher who had recently just completed his first year teaching at Ray County High School in John Scopes. Uh, Scopes had accepted the theory of evolution uh, though he does not recall or did not recall actually having taught the theory of evolution. Um, his defense attorney in this trial was Clarence Darrow, who was the nation's leading defense attorney of the 1920s. Um, and William Jennings Bryan, uh, who was a leader of the fundamentalist movement, uh, who after uh, leaving Washington, uh, turned his energy to the campaign against the teaching of evolution in the nation's schools, according to Noel. Uh, Brian had always believed that the social implication of Darwin, Darwinism constituted a threat that vastly overshadowed any specific uh, difficulties relating to the interpretation of the book of Genesis. Um, Brian had not tried a lawsuit in nearly 25 years, but he volunteered to try this uh, case on behalf of the World's Christian Fundamentals Association. Um, it was to help prosecute Scopes in what initially was a minor misdemeanor case. Um, now, to help publicize this message, Brian wrote a response to the trial's results, which was uh, finding against the defense and just a fine of $100. But, uh, he died five days after the trial and never got to deliver this highly anticipated speech. Uh, on paper, the country's first trial of the century resulted in a little more than a loss for the defense and a $100 fine for scopes, both which were set aside when the case was appealed. Uh, to the people of Dayton and elsewhere in the United States, however, the result was so much more. Uh, although the jury had decided to side with Brian. Darrow had brought the theory of evolution to the forefront of public mm -hmm. education. Um, the Butler Law was eventually repealed years later, 42 years later in 1967, and that would allow teachers in Tennessee to teach evolution as an accepted scientific idea. Uh, the Scopes trial became an iconic confrontation between science and religion. Uh, this remains the most famous case uh, most famous event in the history of the evolution and creationism controversy. Um, you know, even today, uh, see, on the third weekend of every July, many teachers, biology teachers, uh, and other tourists descend on Dayton to celebrate the Scopes trial play and festival. Um, the festival includes a reenactment of the famous trial, as well as a history within us session for local residents to share stories about the trial and that have been passed down through generations. Um, and not surprisingly, the biology teachers visit Dayton each year to see the many sites associated with the ground zero of the evolution and creationism controversy. Uh, myself, I am a history teacher. Um, I am not big on teaching the theory of evolution. Uh, I'm more of a creationism. Uh, with that being said, I just kind of bypass that theory. I don't teach it. I uh, hope that doesn't come back to haunt me one day. Uh, I want to thank you for listening to my forum. Thank you.